Ableton Live is the number one worship leading software that will drastically improve the musical and production quality of your worship ministry. I've been a worship leader for 10 years. I've been using Ableton Live for only three years now. My only regret is I did not begin learning it sooner. In this video, I wanna give you an in-depth look at my Ableton Live worship set. This will give you an idea of the power of Ableton to not only run a click in tracks in worship, but how it can also automate lyrics, video, and lighting in your worship gatherings. So keep watching this video because by the end of it, you're gonna have a firm grasp on how Ableton Live can benefit your worship ministry. And at the end, I'll tell you about a cool opportunity for you to begin learning this advanced software today. My name is Jake Gosselin with churchfront.com, an online resource for innovative and creative worship leaders. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can continue to receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your church. Make sure you check out the show notes below this video for some links to free resources for your worship ministry. And you can also check out my online course, Lead Worship with Ableton. So in the rest of this video, I wanna walk through the gear and software setup I use every Sunday at Mission Lakewood Church. Church. We're a small church plant here in Colorado, so Ableton Live has been incredibly helpful, not only in enhancing the sound of our band, but also automating our production elements where we frankly just don't have all the manpower to run lighting and lyrics to the level that we want them to. But Ableton Live takes care of that. So in the rest of this video, I wanna show you my setup and how it works. So here in front of me, I have all the gear and software I use to utilize Ableton Live to its fullest potential in worship. So I have two computers. This computer right here is my Ableton Live laptop. This one sits on stage, usually right next to our drummer. And then I have my other computer, which is back in our tech booth, that's running ProPresenter for lyrics and video on our screens. And then also our lighting software, my DMX 3.0. And then the third piece of major hardware I use is the Looptimus MIDI foot controller that I have right here. And here's kind of a general overview of how all this stuff talks to each other and how this all works during worship. So at the beginning of worship, when the countdown gets to zero, I cue up song number one by pressing this button, and then I press play on my Loop to Miss Mini right here. And then what's gonna happen is it's gonna send the signal to Ableton Live through a USB cable. And remember, this computer is on stage maybe about 15 feet away from me, so the USB cable goes from the Looptimus to this laptop. And then uh, this laptop runs our click track in Ableton as well as our backing tracks. Uh, so I'll also have an audio output that goes to our digital snake on our stage that then goes to our sound console. And then another thing that happens is once I trigger a song using my foot pedal and it starts playing in Ableton Live, then Ableton Live sends MIDI signals over Wi-Fi to the other MacBook Pro running Pro ProPresenter and lighting, and that's how ProPresenter and my lighting software are automated. I also have a Samsung 256 gigabyte solid state drive I store all of my uh, Ableton Live media on. Uh, I love how small and compact this hard drive is and it performs really fast and because it's solid state it's going to be reliable i don't have to worry about it failing anytime soon and then right here i have my looptimus and my looptimus mini foot controllers and what happens is i have these foot controllers near me when i'm leading worship and then when i'm ready to cue up a song i press the button to cue up the right song in ableton and then i press another button on my looptimus mini to play the song and then the magic happens. So now let's dive more into Ableton Live and what's all going on any given Sunday when I use it. So what happens is when our band is finished rehearsal, uh, I'm gonna press a keyboard command on Ableton. It's gonna bring me to this locator right here. And I'm just gonna press play. That's gonna bring up our pre-service settings in uh, Pro Presenter and in our lighting software. So you'll, you'll hear there's some background music we have playing softly. Uh, we just have the logo up on our screen. Um, so this is what the look and feel of everything is like uh, about half hour leading up to uh, the worship service. And then we do, we do do a five minute countdown as well. And you'll notice it also triggered up the right lighting scenes in my DMX 3.0. So we have pre-service house lightings and then we black out the stage. Pretty, pretty simple, but you could really configure it however you'd want. And then at the beginning of 
our service, this is what happens. We have a countdown in ProPresenter going. And let's just drag this to the end of the countdown right here. So there's five seconds left in this countdown. And our band is on, on stage, ready to go. So I'm going to let this play through. And then I'm going to make sure song one's queued up. And then when it hits zero, I press play. You can see the playhead advancing. It starts fading in our tracks. It blacks out the screen, brings up the first song. And then we're in business. So this song was Glorious Day. You can hear the actual lyrics here. So look what's happening here as a playhead advances in Ableton Live. On the top track, I have my markers track, which is just some empty MIDI cues to label different parts of the song. Then I have a tempo clip here on underneath this second track. And the tempo clip is an empty audio file that simply sets the master tempo of Ableton Live so that the metronome here is at the right tempo. So this will switch when I go to different tempo clips for different songs. I also have a track for just the plain old audio file click that sometimes comes with multi-tracks. I have a guide track that give us cues to count off different sections of the song. You know, for example, if I were to zoom in here for you, you could see this is the guide. It's gonna count off the intro. Intro, two, three, four. Verse, two, three, four. Counts off different sections of the song so my band never gets lost. I put an MP3 track in here so I can hear the original arrangement. I'll solo that for you. And then I have these green tracks here, which are all of my Pro Presenter cues. So I create a couple tracks for Pro Presenter in case if I want to stack cues on top of each other like I do here. Um, and then I have my lighting cues MIDI track right here. So you can see I have my house lighting cues, my band uh, stage lighting cues, uh, different cues for our LED lights for the different colored looks that we have throughout worship. And you know, as the playhead advances, it's gonna hit those cues and then it's gonna cue up those right scenes in my lighting software and the right lyrics in Pro Presenter. And then I have a couple cool tracks here for running pads. So sometimes, like at the intro of this song, I just wanted to have a little bit more of a beefier pad sound at the beginning, kind of fade in. So I have church front pads right here. And then uh, I also use pads like sometimes we just want to be able to be spontaneous in worship. So what's going to happen is that the end of the third song we have in our set, it's going to f the song's going to fade out, and then it's just going to be pads playing in the background with our click track. And I have a loop marker right here. And then I have a MIDI cue that triggers the loop locator. So watch what happens when the play it hits hits this MIDI cue. It's going to loop back to the beginning of that section right there. So it could keep going on and on however long I want it. When I press pause, the pads fade out. I have lots of reverb applied to this patch track right here. Uh, and then I have a stop track down here, so that's whenever I want Ableton to just stop by itself. A good example of this is like when I queue up my pre-service settings, I want to press play and then not have to worry about pressing pause. It'll just automatically stop right there on the stop queue. So Ableton is really powerful in how you can map MIDI cues like from the stop queue track right here up to the actual stop button in transport. And then of course I have all of my backing tracks. I'll zoom way out here for you so you can see what's going on. I have song one. Song two, song three is Miracle, song four, Spirit of Living God, song five is Reckless Love, and then we have a postlude. Um, and it's all set up in arrangement view, so it's a chronological timeline. I can really, it's, it's, I think the arrangement view is the best way to set tracks up for worship. And then it's cool because then I can, you know, perfectly time my transitions here. So you can see how the tracks of this first song, Glorious Day, are fading out, and then I Lift My Eyes will be fading in. One, two, one, two, three, four. And then if I want to go in, say like I'm looking at Reckless Love here and I want to mix the sound of my backing tracks, that's really easy to do on the fly. Turn off the MP3 for you. These are all my tracks. This is the mix that I used this past Sunday. Like our band doesn't have a bass player, so I made sure I kept bass in there. Chorus. We have our electric guitars. I can, of course, adjust all of the, the different levels, the volume of each track really easy. Let's say if I were wanting to change a key of a song really quickly, all I'd have to do is select all of the tracks for that song. I probably don't need to select the uh, percussion tracks though. 
And then uh, what I'll do is go into the warp mode and then I can just say, okay, let's, let's transpose this up two semitones. So here's what it sounds like first. And then if I want to go up two semitones, let's go up six semitones. But I'm going to undo those because I don't really need to transpose the song that much. Let's pretend that I wanted to actually speed up the tempo of the song. I don't really know why I would want to do that, but that's also easy to do on the fly. So I'll select my master tempo clip I have up here that sets the metronome in Ableton Live, but it's also going to adjust all the audio files and, and speed them up without distorting the sound too much. So I'm going to go down here and I'll switch the segment BPM. It's at 83 beats per minute. Let's switch it to 100 beats per minute. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Intro. So it's super easy to adjust both the key of songs and also the tempo of songs in Ableton Live. Lastly, I just want to kind of show you one of my favorite ways that Ableton just kind of makes the different transitions in worship really seamless. And this is when we're coming out of the sermon message uh, in our service. And at our church, we do two songs after the sermon. And towards the end of the sermon, what I'll do is I'll enable some pads, to just kind of have some soft, subtle pads uh, playing in the background underneath the end of our pastor's sermon. And then when he starts praying at the end, and of course, uh, the pads will just continue to loop in the background until we enable the next song. So so our pastor gets to the end of his sermon and then after he prays he talks about how hey we're going to transition back into worship now so he invites people to stand uh, so we can worship together and then when he invites people to stand and he starts exiting the stage watch what happens i'm going to press number four for song four in our set list which in this case is reckless love it's going to jump to that locator and it blacks out all the lights uh, and then it also sets the house lighting to uh, to dim so for our when we sing our worship songs and then it also gives us a couple measures to do all this so that like Intro, uh, we don't two, count off the song three, immediately four. but now as you can see the song counts off and then in pro presenter we have the title slide and uh, the backgrounds queued up we have our new lighting scene queued up for that song as well uh, it's just it's just really seamless when you program all this stuff ahead of time with Ableton Live. Yet despite all the programming we're doing ahead of time, there's still room to program in flexibility into our worship set. As I already showed you, with those looping pads, but you can go through a song, you can create repeat cues so that, say you're going through a chorus, you wanna sing it one more time, you just press a button on your foot controller and it will repeat that section of the song and then it will just keep going through the end of that song. So there's just so many different advanced little tweaks you can make to your Ableton Live set to allow for that flexibility in worship. If you're new to Ableton Live and implementing the software in worship, I highly recommend you check out my free training linked below this video. You're gonna learn all about the benefits of this software, some I didn't even cover here. You're also gonna learn about myths to avoid. You're also gonna learn about the tools to get you started. And finally, I'll give you my 10 step blueprint for implementing Ableton Live at your church. If you're convinced that Ableton Live is the right solution for your church, because you're excited about all the benefits it offers, and you want to implement it the quickest and easiest way possible, then check out my online course, Lead Worship with Ableton. That's also linked below in the show notes. In this online course, I'll walk you step-by-step step through my implementation process for Ableton Live for worship leaders. You don't have to be a techie worship leader. You don't have to have any experience with Ableton Live. Even if you do have experience with Ableton Live or other digital audio workstations, this course will save you a ton of time in developing an efficient work workflow that's going to fit into your worship planning routine. So click whatever link below is best for you. I look forward to seeing you inside the training or my online course. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, hit that thumbs up button, share this video with your other worship leading friends, and don't forget to subscribe to the Church Front channel so you can continue to receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your church.